Hey everybody, it is your boy Jack here coming at you with the haul that you probably didn't expect until you saw the thumbnail of this video. The Comicsology haul for October 2019. Yes, it is here. Yes, it is a surprise haul. And yes, this video was something that I basically realized I could probably make. So I made it. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, besides me trying to explain what's going on because I don't know what I'm saying. Um, in this video, I'm going to be uh, going through the my most recent order that I did with Comixology uh, and everything. Some are pre-orders, some are post-orders, and some sort of connect... Uh, some and mostly all somehow connect to the comic box or subscription box, so slight spoilers there. Uh, besides that though, um, one thing I'll say initially is most of you are probably being like, why are you not ordering from a local comic shop? You boy don't have that here. Um, I don't really live near a local comic shop. If I did, I'd probably be supporting them some way, somehow. Um, but Comixology is, pretty de is a pretty easy way for me to read comics, personally. Um, so that's why I read them. Like, that's how I read them and everything. It's just easy to do it on my phone when I have a break at work or something. Besides that though, let's dive into the haul. So the first comic I have here is Co Gogor issue number two and three. So I've decided to order issue two and three of Gogor because I read the first issue, I like where it went, and I like how the story can go. So I sort of decided, okay, your boy's gonna get cop the two first, uh, the next two issues. Plus, it's cheaper to do the first two issues and get the whole trade because the whole trade's like 16 bucks or whatever, where you can get the single issues for like two bucks. Just saying. Um, I like it. I want to read a good indie once in a while, so I feel like that's a good indie, has some good fantasy vibes. Uh, Go Gore by Image Comics, I'd recommend it because um, it looks really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm grabbing number two and number three because I want to read a good indie. Um, next comic I have here is Sierra and the Royal Stars, issue number one. Uh, it was a Stadium Comics exclusive cover in the comic box or subscription box for, I believe, August. I'll correct it on screen if I'm wrong. But it's a Stadium Comics exclusive cover. Most of the time when I have an exclusive cover variant, I don't read the comic in paper. I normally read it through Comixology. Um, so I haven't read the Sierra and the Royal Stars yet. Excited to added it onto my order and have hauled it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read that. I haven't read it yet, but I'm excited for an indie. Um, the next comic I have here is Daredevil. Uh, I'm going to be grabbing the second, or I've grabbed the second volume of Daredevil um, by Chip Zdarsky um, and other people that I'm forgetting right now. But if you're not reading the Daredevil comic, I'd highly recommend it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, it is a great, great issue, or great series. I've read the first five issues and I was like blown away. It is like, the art is amazing, it's dark, it's gritty, it's like, um, it's sort of like a manhunt against um, Daredevil, and it's just like, ooh, it's such a great investigation into who Daredevil is as a character, and I really like that, and I like how they include different characters as well. Your boy was hoping that this is like, this came out sooner too, because like, I love Daredevil, like I literally read the first, like the first volume, in like a minute. Like it literally was just like, I kept on reading, reading, reading. I loved it, it's so great. Now I'm just like patiently waiting for the second volume to come out, the second trade. And ooh, it's so, oh I hate it, I hate it. I love this comic so much. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm ordering Daredevil vault, like trade number two, because it's just really good. I'm really excited about it. Haven't heard anything but good things about this comic. Moving forward to the next comic here, we got Invisible Woman number one. Uh, so this comic here, it was uh, in uh, one of the more recent um, comic box or subscription boxes. It was a really awesome variant cover and everything. Um, and um, the main, like the main reason why I haven't read it yet is because I just want to like keep that variant edition cover fresh. Um, so that's why I'm reading it on Comixology. This is a series I'm still excited for and I want to see where it goes in its first issue and maybe see how the whole, like, maybe pick up the whole trade um, after I read the first issue, seeing how it goes. Uh, but I, uh, I haven't really heard anything about it, 
but it does look like a good series and I'm sort of wanting to at least read the first issue, dip my toe in it and see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's the main reason why I'm reading it on Comixology is just because it's a variant cover. Um, but yeah, that's basically Invisible Woman number one. That's why I'm getting it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you've read it, let me know down below on why you ordered it or like why you got it and like is it good or not. Um, but yeah, moving forward to the next one here, probably one of my favorite comics of this year. You got Guardians of the Galaxy number eight or number nine and number ten. Um, so, Comicsology, uh, or Guardians of the Galaxy, number 9 and number 10. I have an 8 and 9 on here, but like, uh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, number 9 and number 10. This is a phenomenal series. Like, I've literally read it. I love it. Uh, Donnie Cates is killing it. The artwork is amazing. I'm literally on the second half of this series. Um, and, oh, it's so good. Like, your boy's craving every issue. It's like, there's so many twists and so many turns. It's just like... And like the character development's great and I really just, I think it's just so fascinating. Like the first six issues were like really cool and everything, but I love to see, uh, I love to see where the second half of this sort of 12 issue series goes. I'm sort of sad though that, he, uh, that Donny Cates is leaving um, this series because he's just done it so well. But um, gotta shout out that series. It's really great. I'm excited for it. Um, but yeah, that's Guardians of the Galaxy number nine and number 10. Um, so yeah. Um, um, moving forward to the next comic, we got Jughead Time Police, issue number two. Now, once again, this was one of the comics I got in, comic, in the comic box or subscription box. Like I say, like a broken record here. Um, but this is a really good comic. I like that it's completely different from the Archie, the main Archie timeline and everything. Um, I like that it has some sort of like goofy sci-fi type roots and everything. I like where the first issue ended off. I was gonna get the second and third issue, but the th like they're so expensive. I was like, bro, why are these single issues so expensive? I think they were like four bucks, and it's just like, oh, I really would want to get two issues of this because I know it's gonna be interesting and I know that it's gonna be wacky and goofy, but I'm not. I'm, I'm just not. I can't. I don't like money wise. It's just a little too expensive. Like I'll get the second issue, then I'll, I'll maybe wait out for the trade. That's sort of my theory and hypothesis about it. Um, but Jughead Time Police issue number two. Uh, I really like the first issue. Really want to see what the second issue sort of heads off. It leaves it like the first issue left it on a cliffhanger, but I'm really excited to see where this development goes. Uh, it sort of reminds me of um, sort of like the Umbrella Academy in a way, like sort of where the ending goes. Uh, um, there's sort of references in there that sort of can somehow relate to the Netflix series, not the comic. I haven't read that yet, unfortunately. But yeah, Jughead Time Police, really good. I love when Archie just does something different. Um, so yeah, um, moving forward to our next comic, it's a trade issue. It is The Amazing Spider-Man issue, or volume number three. Um, so I've been reading this comic in trade. Um, I probably about like a year ago or I think, yeah, probably about a year ago, I got these amazing um, Jamal Campbell variants and everything that are tribute covers to Gambit's and Deadpool's first appearances. Love them. Um, and they sort of like got me in and hooked into um, the amazing Spider-Man. And I basically, I've been reading this comic in trade. Like, and I don't think, the first volume wasn't bad. Just finished the second volume. Our first volume first volume was really really good. I love the first volume second volume had its moments and everything and I feel like part of it is like how I look at Nick Spencer it's like he does he's not a fully action-packed writer he does take his creative or like he, he doesn't just want to make a spider-man that's like oh action here action there action here he does take his time to sort of develop the smaller moments and everything and more life moments and everything and that's something I sort of like, I was sort of like upset about at first when reading the second volume, but at the same time, I did, I do get why he's going so slow with um, like going from the second volume and everything and like why the second volume is so slow. Um, just because he's also, he's also writing um, Archie right now and Archie's very much sort of in the same aspect of like down low, like it's not going to be some big action packed adventure, all that kind of stuff. He's... Um, when he's writing like Archie, I think he's writing like 705 to 710 or something of the Archie series and 
Um, it sort of makes sense on like the two correlating together, having similar story arcs or having similar um, types of like ha him writing Spidey in a sort of lower like less action-packed type comic and everything. But I didn't initially like it at first, but I want to see where the third volume goes. I heard the fourth one isn't bad, um, and the tie-ins to Absolute Carnage are pretty good as well. So yeah, I'm going to be picking him up. Uh, I'm going to be picking um, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 up. Excited to see where that goes, to say the least. Um, so yeah, moving forward to the next one, it's another trade. It is the War of the Realms. Um, it's the whole trade, a Volume 1 of 1. Um, Read the first two issues of War of the Realms. I really liked it. I like where it goes. I like how it's sort of like a disaster and everything. Um, I heard War of the Realms isn't bad as an event, and it's one of those big events. So it's sort of, like, for me, it's like I never really read those like big events and everything. But I like the first two issues. I like how it's sort of as guardian magic and everything, like the sort of war between the different elves and all that kind of stuff and the different mythical stuff and like the different creatures and stuff in the Asgardian type realm. I like it. I want to see where it goes. Um, I know that this second issue sort of split up a lot of the team, sort of like splitting up a lot of the different options and stuff, um, or split up a lot of the different teams and like to their certain missions and different tie-ins and stuff. But I want to see where this goes. I think it's it can be really interesting if done right. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm just excited to read this comic for that reason. Um, so yeah. Moving forward to the next comic, it is another trade, um, sorry to repeat myself. It is Naomi Season 1. So, um, Naomi, uh, is a comic by DC. It's done by Brian Michael Bendis and Jamal Campbell. Um, I met Jamal Campbell actually at Fan Expo and everything. I sort of got to talk to him for a quick minute, um, and... Yeah, I signed a cover. Like he signed, he signed like a, the Deadpool covers. I was just talking to her. the Gambit and um, Deadpool first appearance, first appearance tribute covers for Amazing Spider-Man uh, and everything. And I, I got to talk to him, got to know him a bit. Like he's uh, and everything. Um, and. I, I got Naomi there, like at, at Fan Expo and everything, which is like the Canadian con, the Toronto Comic Con, um, and everything. And um, I, I got Naomi there, read it. I like that. I love this perspective that they have with this comic. I like that it's a mystery comic. I sort of already know where it's going and everything, but I'm down to get se like season one. It's called season one, but it's trade one um, of the comic because. It seems really interesting. I love the artwork. I love how the um, art sort of displayed and everything. I like the writing, how it's sort of very simple. But I want to see where it goes. Um, if you want to read, if you want to read a really interesting comic that sort of has a really great sort of civilian take on um, superheroes and more, like more specifically DC superheroes, but like. Um, like, you can sort of say superheroes overall, but more in a civilian set of eyes. This is a great comic, like, for that reason. Like, I read the first issue, it's great. Um, I love the artwork, and it just, it's exciting to see where it's gonna go with this sort of fresh perspective. I rarely get to see with comics of having that civilian perspective there, um, and how they sort of view superheroes. Uh, so yeah, moving forward, we got Miles Morales Spider-Man. Um, the first six issues, aka volume one. Um, so Miles Morales Spider-Man, I read the first couple issues um, and then I sort of fell off of it. And then I'm like, uh, like I saw a couple posts on like Facebook and Twitter and stuff and even Reddit, I think I went on Reddit, saying like this, how where the series goes and everything. And I was sort of interested to see where it goes. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. That's why I want to pick the first six issues up because it's not a bad series. I just feel like the biggest problem I have with Saladin Ahmed as a writer is that he never, um, he, he brings the, like the big moment in the middle of the comic, not towards the end of the comic. And uh, which he could maybe focus a bit more on is like making, giving me a reason to, um, continue this comic past this, uh, the first issue or past the second issue and everything giving that kind of commitment uh moving forward to the last few comics here we got archie and the and married life 10 years later or whatever um issue number one uh we got the flash uh we got this comic or i got this comic in the most recent comic boxer subscription box unboxing 
uh, and everything. It was a Flash cover. It was a Stadium Comics exclusive tribute variant. So obviously your boy is going to be reading this on Comixology to not damage the comic itself. Um, but yeah, um, Archie Life After Marriage, I'm just buying it just to see where it goes. But to be honest, like, I don't really love the whole concept of it. And I feel like, like, it's not, like, I, I find it weird in the sense of just, like, oh, who he's going to pick and everything. And, like, or, like, what's life 10 years later, that kind of thing. Like, I just don't, I don't know because I don't read, like, I don't read those kinds of Archie comics. So I'll probably just drop it off after the first issue. So, yeah, um, that's just my thoughts. That's it. Like, um... I, I want to read it just to, for the sake of reading it, but um, it's one of the, uh, I'm probably going to drop it um, just because it's just, I don't, it's not my kind of comic. It's not something I can get invested into um, probably. Uh, so yeah. Moving forward to the uh, next ones, we got um, Absolute Carnage. I'm, I'm picking up this whole series. Two to five, I'm picking them up. They've already pre-ordered the ones that are pre-ordered. Um, Absolute Carnage. Read the first issue, mind blown. Like, you know when a comic's so good that it like, that like the the visuals and even the, like the writing just makes it feel cinematic? Like, that that's what the first, um, first issue like gave me. Like, it felt like a cinematic comic. Like, it felt like I was watching sort of like an animated short, like animated short film, like part one of it. And it's just like, it's awesome. It's well thought out. It's amazing. It's crazy. I didn't initially love Venom's drawing and then it grew on me instantly. I'm like, ooh, this is good. This is interesting. I like how he's sort of a bit more of a sort of, um, he, he's a bit more anxious looking or like more um, sort of cartoony looking compared to Carnage and everything. I love it. I'm going to see where it goes. I've heard probably nothing but good things about this comic as well. It's probably the biggest, it's it's probably the end of the year, a hype event and everything, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, so yeah. Um, next up, obviously an attachment to that, Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales. Obviously got the tribute cover to, um, the tribute cover here, to, um, the maximum carnage and everything and Venom's first or er, and Carnage's first appearance. Um gonna gonna get this first issue. This is a three issue series, so like I feel like if this first issue isn't bad and everything, there's a good tie-in and everything. Um I'm probably just gonna grab the first the next two issues. Like it's just a three issue mini series um to sort of be a tie-in. I'll probably buy it for that buy the other two issues for that reason. Um but yeah the premise seems really interesting though. It has a scorpion in there and yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. Like I'm interested to see what this comic has and what brings to the table um, and how it sort of maybe ties into Absolute Carnage. Um, but it does look interesting. I'm excited for it. Um, uh, moving forward to our next comic here, we got Justice League Black Hammer, issue number two. Um, I was gonna say one there, but issue number two. Um, Justice League Black Hammer, I read the first issue, really loved it. Very simple, simple premise, but I love the characters that were in there and I love how they were written. I think, I believe it's Jeff Lemire who's writing it. Really great comic in that sense. And I want it, it's interesting to see because I feel like for me, it's like, okay, you're getting an opportunity to view two very different worlds, but at the same time, when it comes to the, this comic, like I'm more excited to see on how the DC universe is gonna be built out in the perspective of the Justice League characters. Cause I'm a bit more, I'm wanting to get into a lot more DC comics and everything, start reading a bit more of them again. But um, yeah. Um, Justice League Black Hammer, number one, excited about that, um, so yeah, um, moving forward to our second last comic here, yes, it's been a long video and I'm sorry about that, but moving forward to our second last, um, comic here, uh, we got Captain Marvel, issue number eight, um, I've been reading this series, first five issues, not too bad, I liked it, it was sort of, um, fed you into the story and everything. If it, it was very enclosed and everything, was excited to see where issue number six, um, moving forward or six or seven forward, sort of led you and everything. Um, and honestly, I would say it's not. It wasn't great. Um, I wish that you know what they stopped doing the whole oh body morphing or body switching and everything with her and other characters. Like I didn't mind the Doctor Strange switch and everything, but. 
at the same time, I felt that like the Captain Marvel series just needs to do something very different. It doesn't. It, it needs to do something that's more like that shows me who Carol Danvers' personality is because I feel like in the first in the beginning of the series and even into the War of the Realms tie-ins. I don't really get to see truly who her character is just on her own or who she is um, just as a standalone character. One of the main reasons why I'm still sticking along with this series is I know they're doing the whole dark Captain Marvel run, so I'm excited to see how that's going to go. But yeah, that's why I'm getting Captain Marvel number eight. Um, so yeah, moving forward to our last comic here, um, it is Batman Superman number two. Really great first issue. Reread it because I'm like... Phew, this is great, like girl, just amazing. Um, Batman Superman number two, really great comic. I like how they sort of reveal a spoiler, but the Shazam who laughs, who I was cackling. Um, it was great, I liked it. I like the fact that like we get to see the Shazam who laughs um, and that sort of introduction, that little seedling. I wanna see where this comic goes because they really gr it's really great at pitting um, Batman and Superman against each other, but at the same time, like it shows why ba the Batman who laughs is such a great villain in opposition to these two characters. I think the writing's gonna is for the first issue was really great. I want to see where this second issue goes, and probably on like if it goes really well, I'll probably just pick up the whole series because it looks interesting. Personally, I haven't heard anything bad about the comic as well um, through the different YouTube channels that I follow. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. It's interesting. Um, uh, and I like, I really do like the visuals and everything as well. Um, so yeah. Besides that, those are all the comics in this month's order, or probably end of the month or end of the year order or whatever. But, train, um, we're going to ignore that. Um, but there are all the comics there. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've read any of these comics, e let me know how the next few issues go or whether some are good, some are bad, whatever. Let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. And as always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jack. Feel free to check out the comic of the uh, comic of the week, Oblivion Song Chapter 1. L check out the description to, to know why it's a comic of the month or week or whatever. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jack. You guys have a good night and bye!